Hello, this is a short video to help you uh, complete this assignment and to just give you a general overview, overview of compound chords. Now at this point we've talked about polychords and there's separate uh, material on that, but I'm going to focus mainly on inversions and hybrid voicings. <clears throat> inversions are simply normal chords, normal structured chords, but with a chord tone other than the root in the bass, so like the third in the bass as in this example or the fifth in the bass. This is the way they're written, um, with the letter name of the upper structure on the left, slash, and then the single note, which is a non -chord, I mean, which is a chord tone in the upper structure that is in the bass, a note other than the root. Uh, inversions have a really interesting sound. They sound a bit weaker than their root, root position counterparts, and for that reason, they're really good to create transitional sounds, particularly stepwise bass. Here's a great example. This is an excerpt of the song Whiter Shade of Pale, which in turn was based on the Bach piece Air on G-String, which is a wonderful example of the use of stepwise bass, which is enabled through the use of inverted chords. Here's the sound of this. <laughs> get the idea um, those are inversions so the next type we're going to think of a type of compound chord we're going to talk about are hybrids hybrids are very different from inversions instead of having a chord tone in the bass there's a non chord tone in the bass this is it makes a huge difference when a non chord tone is placed in the bass with an upper structure above it which again does not contain the bass note uh, an interesting thing happens. The chord looks like one thing, but it sounds like something else. In this case, the chord kind of looks like some for, sort of form of G chord, but actually the sound of it will be more like a C chord. But another characteristic of hybrids is that they don't end up having a third above this root. And remember, now we're considering that the C is now the root of this structure. And you'll notice that there's no E or E flat above that in the upper structure. So we get an interesting sort of C like chord, but without a third. And this is what makes them really different and unique. This is not like any other normal chord you may have learned before. Hybrids create a new, interesting, open, sort of intentionally ambiguous sound, which is very useful in some situations. Here's an example in the chorus of. Moonchild's Every Part for Linda, that you'll hear a little bit of this and then you'll hear these uh, hybrids right here. Again, notice that there's a non chord tone in the bass, and again, a non chord tone in the bass. This is going to create sort of a sus4 type sound. This is going to create a sort of emulation of a major 7 with a 9 sound. Always doing something for somebody Every time that I turn around I look to the light See You smiling back at me Okay, that's a great example. Another example is Something by Snarky Puppy. Uh, it begins with a sort of minor line cliche thing, but when it gets into here, it creates this interesting hybrid texture. Again, intentionally ambiguous. There's no thirds. There's no third to, to make a full F major sound. There's no third to make a full C major sound. It's more a uh, suggestion of the chord. So these, again, are going to be uh, sort of major seven like sounds with a nine and these are going to be more sus four like sounds 
A telltale sign is that when you have a major triad over a root, you're going to, uh, which is a, a fifth above the root, you're going to get a sort of major seven with a nine sound. When you get a major triad above the root that is a flat seventh above the root, you're going to get a sort of sus four with a nine sound. Ooh, it's something you and I have something how I long to be around when when you can see that you and I have something in common oh it's something when you can see that and I'm sure of one thing how I So that's a, another great example. And finally, let's take a look at this Bruno Mars song here. This is more of a, this particular kind of hybrid um, might look like a third inversion of a G7 chord, but because there's no seventh in the upper structure, it creates more of a Lydian sound. Okay, so there's some examples of hybrids. Um, I could play many, many more, but hopefully you're getting the sense that they create their own unique sound. Now there's a particular way to derive them, and that will be displayed, I mean that will be explained in another video, which is accompanying this one name of it is how to derive hybrid voicings. But essentially what you do is you take the chord scale that goes with the chord, the conventional chord, and you remove any thirds, the third of the chord, and you also remove any harmonic void notes. You also don't put the root of the basic chord in the upper structure. And the result is that some chord scales give you many hybrids and some only give you one. Some don't give you any at all. So watch that video to learn how to derive hybrids.